Recording. Recording, is on. recording is on. Hello and welcome to the uh, Monday, 18th of January, 2021, uh, DxDAO call. Um, let me just paste the agenda in a second and we have some additional stuff. Um, yeah, so the agenda for today is first of all, new member introduction. And I do believe we have a couple of uh, new people here. Uh, and then we'll move on to um, um, the project that Venki has been working on and I've been kind of assisting, um, the OKR project, uh, which is progressing neatly. Um, we have a discussion on how uh, the DSDAO can collaborate or partner with other uh, uh, communities or projects. And an additional item that was just added by Geronimo on the uh, Omen XDI launch, which is a big milestone. Um, so yeah, I guess we can start with introductions. Um, Bavel, I believe you're new, and there are a couple of other people here. Is it just yes, you? yes. So uh, my name is Bavel, and I'm from Iraq. I'm very new to the industry. Uh, you could say it's been only two months since I've been trying to learn about um, cryptocurrency, DeFi, Ethereum, and these things. Uh, Adam Azad. Uh, a close friend of mine and he's been helping me to find my way through it i've studied business administration i have bachelor's degree and i'm working as an hr right now so that's basically it and i'm looking for a way to find a career in this industry what do you mean career yes like you know career career, career probably, yeah. oh career sorry well uh, i guess welcome um, Thank you. Yeah, it, 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 it's awesome that you know people bring their friends because it's uh, um, yeah, it's it's a great way to I, I think grow uh, the yeah, basically very. the DAO. Um, yeah, so feel free to you know join the Keybase chat and ask any questions if you have. And thank you. Get, um, get, I'll maybe try figure out more often from now on. Yeah, maybe figure out if there's something you can do. Um, we have C in the chat as well. Yes. That maybe wants to introduce himself. And Ali, has Ali introduced himself? Yeah, Ali. I, I, I talked to Ali. Yeah, I, I'm okay. here. Oh, hi, Ali. Yeah. Maybe start. Am I coming through? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Oh, um, yeah. So oh, yeah, I'm I'm Ali. Um, I met Martin earlier on call. Um, thank you uh, for that again, Martin. That was a pleasure. Um, so I'm I guess primarily a full stack developer. Um, I've been in the blockchain space for a while, and, and just trying my best to keep up with everything. <laughs> um, I haven't really developed any. Uh, so I worked on a blockchain project in the past. I haven't personally been a developer on anything blockchain related. So I'm learning smart contract development and yeah, I look forward to seeing how I might be able to to help uh, and what might what I might be able to help. Awesome. Welcome. Um, and just on the like it's impossible to actually keep up with all the information that's happening. That's very uh, true. <laughs> like I, I think maybe the people here are kind of like more well versed in what's happening like the DAO space. But you know there are so many like rabbit holes happening that you you just can't keep up if you actually want to do work. Um, that's I mean very, even yeah. inside yeah. the DX stone, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I'm looking forward. I'm sorry, I am uh, primarily looking for sort of like a, a, a community, um, yeah, that is just interested in in building interesting things for for the space. Um, and helping advance in some ways. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so welcome and stick around. Um, like you'll probably be able to find some work to do. Cool. Um, do we have anyone else? There was, there's a C, but I don't think um, he's around. Maybe it's Hen, I don't know. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm just lurking here as, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm doing other stuff so I can't really talk, so, <laughs> um, yeah. 
It's Gnosis Chen, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I guess we can move on if there's anyone else. Um, no? All right. Um, thank you. Are you around? Um, you can share and maybe talk about um, the OKR working doc that we have. A lot Absolutely. of contributors from uh, from the DigStyle, and it's starting to take shape. Yeah. Um, so hi again. And uh, let me just first share my screen, and let's start. Um, cool. So uh, last week, we spoke about OKRs, and then uh, we spoke about uh, um, how we should set OKRs and everything. So this week, um, we ha I have created a spreadsheet here. And then uh, to start with, I have created uh, the company OKRs. And then the three objectives that uh, we discussed, I added them here. Um, so basically, uh, for every objective, we should end up creating these uh, key results. Um, so what I have done right now is I got some inputs on Swapper, on Omen, and on BizDev. So from that, I was trying to see if I can create a key result here uh, to add as an inspiration. But then, uh, yeah, I would prefer somebody else uh, takes this up and then add some key results to all of these objectives. Um, that's on the company OKRs. Uh, so once we have created these company uh, objectives and OKRs, we could go to the individual squads. I took the squads from, there was a spreadsheet called DX squads. Um, uh, there was a spreadsheet called DX squads and then I took all of the squad names from there. Uh, so once, um, yeah, we should, okay, I'll rename organization OKRs. Uh, or DAO uh, uh, So yeah, so from, um, from for each squad, uh, we should uh, have a couple of objectives, a max of two, uh, like I said. So from there, we should be able to create uh, a quarterly OKR. So I have, I have uh, the annual OKR here, and then under that, I have the quarterly OKR. So yeah, uh, once all the squads have updated it, then I have to make it a little bit more presentable. Uh, this is what I could work with within a week, uh, but then I would make it a little bit presentable. So we spoke in the chat that yeah, we should have a trading volume of 200 million by the end of the year. Uh, from there, I kind of measured if Swapper can reach a trading volume of um, 10 million. Um, but yeah, it is, we, we could change this. And then similarly, I have updated it for Omen. Uh, Omen looks a little bit better, um, being most uh, prediction market in Ethereum. And then it is aligned to which objective in uh, uh, the company OKR. So I have updated that here, uh, reaching 60 million USD total value of bets, 30K unique addresses, and uh, 2,500 markets created. So from that, I kind of wrote the Q1 OKRs. Um, so yeah, uh, 10 million, 8K, 300 markets created. I mean, I would uh, request Jero to update them. Um, and whatever initiatives that we are actually taking, uh, then we just list them here. Okay, so I haven't done anything else for the other squads. Um, so if if squads can work with this one um, this week, then I think it is it is done. I mean, we will have our OKRs, then we can actually start uh, monitoring them. Yeah, so I, I think this is <coughs> this is like super important, and we should get, I guess we have some sort of squad leaders or um, I don't know, self-emerging leaders, I guess, um, that can maybe, you know, give it a couple of uh, a couple of minutes or a bunch of thoughts. And I think, um, yeah, like this, this could be, this could do very well for DXDAO because we'll, we'll be able to share 
externally and internally like what are we working on and what's the direction we're taking um and i think yeah like the marketing communications could be supporting these um like these like, like each uh squad okr um so yeah like this is just like a few more thoughts if anyone wants to add anything yeah and if that's done this week um in in a week and a half i think we have the like squad um short short squad presentations and obviously those will ha will tie out with and take um take direction from the these okrs like the so when it's presented to anyone external internal whatever like you see the plan for the squads the whole point of like the budgets and the the, the required uh, resources and things are in order to achieve these outlined OKR. So it goes, it's good timing and it goes well together. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would, I would uh, message all of the squad uh, scouts, uh, basically, and then uh, just check with them if if you guys need any help in uh, getting this updated so if i was i was thinking that uh, the product strategy meeting that we have in two weeks by then uh, if we have the roadmap that we talked about in the last dx this meeting and then if they have this okrs i think it is set for uh, the quarter and the year or, and then we can start monitoring does that sound a good goal yeah i think that's a good goal yeah, because we'll have that'll be the day after do the resource coordination and we can yeah, I think that's a good timeline there. And we could kind of set it for Q1 there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, th that's an interesting idea, um, Federico, to add to add this to the DX DAO landing page. I think perhaps like after we ratify it, we can create like an IPFS version of all these things and then link them in the landing page. Sounds good. Great work, guys. I'm especially a fan of like that you guys are um, like simplicity maximalists. Sometimes like people come with 12 page docs and that's especially like for, for this kind of uh, structure. It's very important that it's like as simple as possible and you guys achieve that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the goal, like the, the premise behind OKRs. It's not like, you know, super complex stuff. It's just very clear direction and goals that, you know, everyone could be like, oh, okay, this is what they're doing. This is what we're doing. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Um, that's it on OKRs then. Any other comments, thoughts? All right. Um, so I guess the next topic is uh, Venki. Can you uh, you can stop sharing? Oh, and you know, feel free to go to the Keybase OKR chat if you want to discuss more about this. There's the links to everything, and yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess the next topic is uh, the Omen XDI deployment. Um, Geronimo. Yeah, um, we have Beth here from Gnosis, who's uh, who wants to talk about uh, how both teams can actually like make the best out of the uh, the XDI launch uh, of Omen. Um, yeah, it seems like the subdomain feature from the ETH.link service uh, is going to be possible because the ENS team is basically giving up the whole infrastructure to Cloudflare, which in result means that um, subdomains for ENS domains do get this like HTTPS certificate, which is a very important thing for us because we're, we're building DeFi products and if someone is like going to those DeFi app dApps, those, yeah, there needs to be like an HTTPS certificate. And that's actually big news. And um, we are going to transi transition Omen into like a subdomain network 
um, structure, which means if someone is going to Omen and they are connected with MetaMask on XDAI, they're, get, they're going to reroute it to xdai.omen.eth. And so this will allow us to um, have like Omen versions specific for networks because compound is not on XDAI. So it doesn't make sense to have like a compound integration feature on XDAI, which means it is just like way more, way better for us to have uh, repositories on GitHub for specific networks of Omen. And um, this means there's like a small delay because the sub subdomains need to be approved by the DXDAO. Proposals are active right now. And then we actually need to push those um, specific Omen versions to those subdomains. And the main question is like, how, how like what can the DXDAO do to promote the, the XDAO release? And then, yeah, Beth, do you want to? Yeah, so that's what I'm here to share about. about so I wrote uh, an explainer of using um, Omen on XDAI. So yeah, we'd be happy to share that with you guys when it's done going through our legal review process um, with Gnosis. And um, I'm writing a press release, making a media list, um, writing, um, you know, like figuring out emails that we'll say to media. So. Um, We'll plan to share all of that stuff on um, the like a few days before it comes out. So that's why, um, yeah, it would just be super helpful for me to you know be make sure that I'm up to date with when the release will actually happen. Like, are y'all planning for um, the 26th? Like, is that still realistic? Because that's what I'm saying in the press release and stuff. Last week, we could do a proposal like today or tomorrow, or we could time it up. So like, let's say the proposal passes on Sunday, right? And that way, but when we announce it on Monday, it's, it's already live. That would be like perfect timing, right? But I mean, that's too close. So if we think that the, like if the proposal would pass on Sunday, then it would need to be at the end of the week. So I could reach out to media for like a few days. What, why is that? Why couldn't we just like do the media the day? It because otherwise won. they like don't respond and like don't necessarily get to us. Um, I mean, it, it, I, I guess like it's live. Like you, you, you could go to it. It's just like, it's nice to go like have it like the media go once it's launched, right? Well, that's the, that's what I'm saying. So like we need to know for sure that it will be launched, that it will be working. I mean, you know, there's no reason to direct people, um, you know, to risk directing people to something that might not work or might not be complete. So, um, you know, like if there's any uncertainty that it will not be ready on the projected day, then, um, you know, I just need, like the day we decide on needs to be a farther in advance day. Yeah. Uh, we had this issue with, like when Omen launched originally, like we didn't get any media coverage because, um, you know, we ended up like having, you know, the wrong day, um, like, or, you know, we had very little coverage um, and then had to tell them actually it's a different day. And I think that it's impacted participation numbers ever since. So, with, so, you know, so now what, I'm not, what are you proposing then? Like that the proposal, like we submit the proposal say Wednesday, Thursday, it takes three days to pass. And so then the proposal passes and then we contact people? Um, I mean, yeah, like um, if the- yeah, Ger Geronimo, is Geronimo, are you here? Yep. He's typing. <laughs> what, what's the earliest day we, we are ready to like submit the proposal, like today? Or we have to wait a few days, right? Uh, nope. Like we need to test stuff um so if i'm optimistic wednesday would be great like to to do a proper release and then hopefully is uh, the community member is going to do the proposal um so yeah uh, wednesday would be hopefully possible um but that's up to to our devs to to see and this like it's it's a complex system because the xdi um omen product is talking to mainnet so those those um 
communication to mainnet needs to be tested properly. Um, we have found several bugs why we tested it. And um, I really hope it, we will not find anything because it should be robust yet. Um, but that's that's something which needs to be seen. Like Claros um, pushed back two times because they luckily found uh, something in the code which might produce issues. And we're at the point where everyone feels good about the stuff, but it needs to be tested, which hopefully will be done until Wednesday so we can release. Okay, so the process would be that we And have... the subdomain, yeah, shoot. Um, wait, is the process that you would test for the next two days and then um, like when testing is complete, then you submit the proposal? Uh, nope. Um, like we will do the testing uh, until Wednesday and uh, hopefully like have this release ready, which is like X die. Uh, X, yeah, which, which which is compatible with this routing to this XDI subdomain. Um, right. And do the proper release on Wednesday, and then someone can make the proposal um, starting on Wednesday. And I think we can also do the testing while the proposal is active. So we have um, a, pro exactly? like a longer period where um, hope, like hopefully after release, this, this is like how, how the DSTAR, uh, how teams are for of the DSTAR is like re releasing stuff. We're releasing the, the version on GitHub and then someone needs to do the proposal. Um, yeah, and that's that's how we do it. So it's uh, hopefully on Wednesday. So it's a proposal saying um, like it's been tested and it's ready to release or what exactly is the proposal? It's like a technical proposal to um, um, allow the xdi.omen.eth domain to show the, the product when ah, users go, um, go okay. there. So, so it's like, basically pushing the website online. OK. So y'all are thinking that you would submit the proposal on Wednesday, and then um, it would be ready to go online at what point? three days like best case three days after the proposal was uh, introduced okay so the earliest possible day that it would be released uh, uh you know available online is on sunday the, yeah saturday or sunday sunday so say sunday okay so then maybe exactly we should, maybe we should think about the announcement at, like do you yeah, I don't know. Like, what do you think is the most realistic day that it will, you know, be more likely to not be in testing anymore and um, that the proposal will definitely go through? Yeah, I, I, I still think uh, we can um, focus on Monday, Tuesday. Like, there's no, there's nothing bad about having the website online because if no one knows there is a subdomain with that product, um, no one will care. So only when we actually announce it, then it's kind of live. I consider that. Um, yeah. So I will. I would orient it on, on Monday and Tuesday, some, somewhere around that. Okay. In that place, in that case, we can still plan on. Um, uh, I mean, maybe if we just push it back to like. Um, Thursday for making the announcement and then I can reach out to media like on Tuesday or something instead of um, needing to do it the week before. So, from my perspective, like when we submit the proposal, like the release is done, right? Because you can't edit it at all from there. So like, that's like the clock starts then and it's like just three days assuming that it passes. Um, so I feel like once the proposal is submitted, like, we should be all full steam ahead. Yeah, but it might not pass. Ethereum might not work too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we should plan for, um, like, I won't reach out to media until I'm like certain that that has passed. So otherwise, um, 
Yeah, yeah that that, yeah. that that seems fine. Like it's if if it goes live and it's like live on the URL on Monday or Tuesday, then you can reach out to media on Tuesday, and then we could then you could announce like the pub like there could be more the announcement and stuff would be on Thursday. You're saying. Yeah, it does. It doesn't matter whether it's live before I reach out to people. I just don't want to reach out. I mean, I don't want to have the same thing that happened before, which was like reaching out to media and then it's like not actually ready to go at the time that we tell them it's going to be. And then we have to message them backtracking and they like lose interest and don't cover us basically. Um, so yeah, like if it's live on Tuesday and then I reach out. I want, I want, I want us to do a product launch when the launch, when the product launches. Um, right. Well then, don't launch it until Thursday. I don't know, like. Well, but then we wouldn't contact the press until after that. We need, we need to contact the press like two days before, saying the product is going to launch on this date. Are you interested in writing about it? Like you reach you reach out to them ahead of time because they want to write about something that hasn't happened yet. Right, and I'm I, my my opinion, and there's probably other people. My opinion is that contact should happen when the proposal is submitted, because there's literally like a countdown to when it's going to launch. I know, but I, I think you aren't understanding why I don't want to do that because that's the re like the exact reason that caused a problem before. Um, we reached out to them when the proposal was submitted, the proposal failed and then all of that work was for waste and like made us look unprofessional and we didn't get anything written and um, I guess I think we're going to run into the same problem of if we say the product is going to launch in some time in the future and we try to get press before that, that we're going to have to take some leap of faith at some point. Right? I don't think you understand. Like we don't, it's not that we're getting press before that you tell press ahead of time because they're getting a ton of emails. Like we want them to be ready and excited for it and maybe have time to test it themselves to write about it. Um, so we need to tell them like two days in advance that something is getting released on the time that it's getting released. But if we reach out to them and say like, I mean, you know, I, like I'm not gonna reach out to them until I'm certain the proposal has passed because that created problems before. Like, I, I mean, like we can assume that if this is gonna be on XTI, right, the proposal. so. Like it should be no problem to get like significant amount of people or like a few more than a few people voting on it. So, like two days before it will pass. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, it's no. Yeah. we're updating. It's mainnet. Oh, you're up, we're updating the ENS on mainnet. I see. Um, yeah. Which doesn't yeah. change anything. Yeah. So, like, I think the only the only option here right now going forward is like the fact that there's like a, um, a chance that the stuff will not get launched on that day means yeah. that uh, we can only prepare when the stuff is kind of a stealth launched and then we are going to reach out once we know it's like accessible it has a certificate it works and then yeah, we're like reaching exactly. out there's no reason why that's exactly what i'm proposing like when it you know it doesn't have to be the exact moment that it comes online and in fact, shouldn't be in case something breaks or whatever at that point. Like, but you know, we announce like the point is to have a coordinated launch, like announcement launch. I mean, obviously, people know it's coming. We even mentioned it, you know, months ago um, when Omen started. I mean, when NOSA started uh, partnering with XDI. Like, it's not, you know, this big secret that gets revealed or something. But the point of the announcement is to be like, you know. It is available and running on XDI now. You can try it, you know, now it exists. It's like definitely working. Um, you know, there is no more holdup basically. So it's more about like coordinating the announcement than like alerting them to, you know, the exact moment it becomes live. Yeah, let's do it like this. Um, uh, once, uh, once the proposal is going live, uh, hopefully on Wednesday after the release happens, um, we're gonna sync up on 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 our like group chat regarding regarding marketing, and then we know that there's a very high chance that it will pass, like because it it got triggered, and then we can start preparing. Okay, I mean, yeah. So basically, like I will 
um, you know, just keep planning on the 26th and then, um, you know, we'll not reach out to anybody. Like I'll plan to not reach out to media until, um, we check in on Wednesday. If you mean this Wednesday, right? The 20th. Um, this Wednesday, GitHub release proposal starts, and then at some point, hopefully, the proposal will uh, trigger the website going online on uh, Saturday or Sunday. Awesome. And then we know it's like, okay, it's live on that subdomain, and then we reach out. Exactly. And we, you know, um, we would not. I mean, we wouldn't reach out to them on Saturday or Sunday anyway, because it's like super hard to get in touch with media on that day. So, um, and you know, I won't be working on that day. Like it is not, um, you know, we wouldn't announce it on the weekend anyways. So, um, okay. So, so, let's, so let's, most likely on Monday is when you would reach out to media. I mean, normally we'll, I it will be live by then. We'll be like, we can start making market, like we can start using it. People can start playing with it, but it's just, and then there'll be like a coordinated announcement on say Wednesday in two Wednesdays. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't announce anything until Wednesday. I mean, obviously people can start using it, you know, people can start um, testing it, but like, you know, the coordinated announcement across telegram channels and all of that stuff needs to happen, um, you know, in a coordinated fashion and not get announced somewhere else before if we want media to cover it, which, you know, we need to to get users. Like nobody has really made omen markets in like a long time. Um, besides just a few. So, uh, what about the um, DXDAO? Like using Twitter you often is like mentioning the proposal. Like we'll mention that the proposal is there, and that's a proposal about this product and stuff. Like that will be on Twitter. Is that's not like that's not an official announcement, but yeah. I mean that's, that's fine. Like we're not you know we're not in stealth mode, but like um, you know if we could announce, you know, plan on announcing at the same time together using the same materials, you know, sharing the explainer that I've made, sharing any materials you guys have written about this, um, you know, planning to share all of those at the same time and then reaching out to media at absolute minimum 24 hours before when that happens, which needs to be at like um, 4 p.m. Berlin time, uh, you know, to hit all the time zones and the right time. So. You know, if we said like 4 p.m. Wednesday, then the latest possible thing that I would reach out to media, I mean, it really should be like two days before. So, um, yeah. All right. So I, I guess, I mean, this sounds like we, we could sync on this like in the group chat. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry that. Yeah. Sorry that this ended up taking up more time. Yeah. But I don't know where is. Thanks for helping. You know. Thanks for doing all of this. Sure. I've been. I've literally been doing like so much work on this. Like you know, compiling a perfect media list. Like you know, making a press release that I think will be useful. Like writing this explainer. So like you know, I really want it to go well for all of us. Um, and uh, yeah, like I just want you know Ed, to be the best that we can do because like, you know, what we're doing is like a really big deal. And, um, you know, I want it to be represented accurately <laughs> uh, or, you know, enough excitement to be happening for this. Um, and Beth, Beth, one more thing is, uh, do, you, do you know if uh, Orin or, or Martin or like Gnosis has a plan to create a few markets on there so that like there's something for people to use or like using, like you guys did for uh, Omen initially? Um, yeah, I could talk to him about, I like, I've been making some markets, um, and I'm going to make a few more tomorrow probably because I made some markets for like the explainer. But if you guys, you know, if, um, like I can definitely talk to Oren about making sure that we have some more and, you know, the awesome thing with it being on X is it's like super easy for us to make markets. So, you know, if, um, I'm happy to make, um, yeah, just now making some more, um, just, and, just need liquidity. Yeah, I mean, also. Yeah, that's like that's another big just like we should probably quickly uh, move move to that discussion and now. Like, um, XDAI Omen on XDAI will be launched. Um, we need to make sure that there is there are some goods, right? There are some markets for yeah. for like uh, active users already. 
So um, what can we do now to make sure that in in one week we will market there for people to test out XDAI? Um, I mean, you know, number one is me still making these markets. Um, if you guys also want to come in and, you know, trade on them and add liquidity, that would be really great. Um, yeah, like if, you know, if anybody would like to join yeah, so, in doing that, that would be super helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, like what, what we can do is like prepare a competition. Uh, Yay, okay. Just to make sure. We are down to do this. Yeah. Because y'all were concerned before about the needing KYC or something? Oh, no, no. Like, um, we have like a competition um, um, tool for for our DXDAO um, system. And we can actually like try to reach out to the community and ask them what kind of markets they want to see on, on XDAI. Um, yeah. Just like requesting some ideas. And they they're getting rewards, and then yeah. um, the Omen Squad will actually like prepare those markets on XDAI. But why we actually do that? We need to make sure that the the Omen Squad on XDAI will get properly funded by the DXDAO, uh, so it can like already prepare um, markets on our own to make sure that I mean there are at least five to ten markets where people can trade. The the cool thing is um, you don't actually need to have huge amounts of liquidity because you can actually trade 10 cents on XDAI without any issues. So we can prepare several markets to make sure that there are markets on XDAI. So people yeah, are yeah. going to XDAI and it's like, okay, there's nothing. Definitely. And one thing that I was noticing and like Oren said, this is getting fixed, but when I was making, uh, you know, when I went to the testing link and I was viewing the markets and then it comes up as automatically saying none. And then I had to change the source or sorry, it was saying no markets available. Then I had to change the source to like none because there was no, um, Claris or DX Dow, um, verified markets, or I didn't quite understand why I had to do this, but yeah, we definitely need to make sure that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that was fixed. Um, uh, I can't really tell who is talking to me, but are we already connected on Telegram? It's uh, Geronimo. So I think you are. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you want to include me in the chat about this, like, you know, I'm happy to help with, you know, like finding more funds for markets, like actively participating as much as needed and like getting the other conditional tokens team members to do, um, to do this. So, um, yeah, like we are really down to help as much as possible. Like I want it to really look exciting and engaging for people. Um, and now, you know, we have a little bit more time than if it was getting released tomorrow, like I had originally been told. So yeah, like please include me in all of this and I'm happy to support as much as needed. Um, and you know, make a bunch of markets and like make it look like there's a lot of activity going on. Um, yeah. Sounds yeah. great. Um, and uh, the, Sky, what like? Uh, yeah, shoot. Uh, just well, the other question that I had, which was, you know, kind of, uh, you know, I consider there to be like three vectors of engagement. Number one, making sure we are wrote about a media and that they are exciting. Um, two, what we just said about like having you know, a like interesting environment of markets. And then number three is um, the, you know, if there was some, you know, legal and whatever way that we could uh, get XDAI to people because, um, you know, if there was some category of people that already had XDAI and, you know, could easily go in and use it with the markets and was like incentivized to do that because, you know, now they have XDAI, like it would be so great. like. Um, you know, air uh, airdrop type thing, or Arn had mentioned like a competition of some kind. Like, what do you guys think about just you know any way of you know giving, like you know, for example, giving XDAI to existing um, people who like all the wallets that have made markets so far or something. Like one of you guys said that that was a great idea. Yeah, I think air like airdropping X out of people is kind of tricky um you know most people have die making it clear how to get x die using the simple bridge 
is part of like the education, which we know like that's the education that comes with like meta switching your RPC on MetaMask and all that stuff. And XDI team has some resources on that. I think maybe yeah. in your in your yeah. note do you talk about that, right? Yeah, I wrote a really thorough explainer on that. Um, let me. Uh, I can actually share it with you guys if you want, um, or I'll send it to you on Telegram maybe. Um, but yeah, so I cover all of that stuff, and you know I think that's fine. But this is about you know just getting people to you know be like, oh maybe I'll try this out today. You know, like something yeah. a little bit more tangible than uh, just seeing an announcement about it. Like you know the same you know just as with any airdrop where you're like, oh I have this thing, I might as well use it or you know, just something to excite people. Um. Yeah, uh, we, we don't, have, does anyone here have experience? Like, like you mean like dropping 10 X die to people kind of thing or like? Exactly, so like what I would be thinking is like, um, you know, for example, everybody, I mean, even if it was as small as like everybody who made a market before, cause you know, basically people just like stopped making markets when gas fees got so high, which, um, you know, is obviously understandable, but like just a huge bummer. So like my optimal like uh, vision for this would be, you know, dropping to the wallets of everyone who made markets before and saying, look how, you know, cheap and easy it is now. Um, why don't you like get back to trying markets now that you can do it on XDAI? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's uh, let's discuss. Well, we can talk about that after this call. Um, okay. Yeah. Please just message me. And um, again, like you know, if that would be cutting too much into you guys, like um, treasury or something, like we, I'm sure we can figure out a way from like conditional tokens um, funds to do that. If um, Actually, maybe it actually does have to come from you guys. Um, I don't know, but yeah, we can talk about that. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, that's all for me. Thank you yeah, for just, talking about it in such just, great detail. Mm. Thank you, Beth. Thanks. Uh, Sky, what what do you like? I just quickly propose like um, two things. Uh, first, we need to request money for the Omen Squad on X Day to make sure. Uh, it's not embar it's it's not an em embarrassing launch. Like we need to have funds there, good markets, and two. Like uh, I think we should launch like two competition competitions for our community regarding scalar markets on XDAI and um, categorical markets on XDAI. Oh yes. Yeah. Just to make sure that we are like inviting the community to participate and and um, yeah, yeah, earn some rep and yeah. also like uh, no, come up with great ideas. The competitions are like multi-week long things so we can launch we can uh, we can start those but those aren't going to be ready for um like the launch or anything the competition yeah, yeah, yeah. is there a reason why they're so long why they, what um i'll, I'll look into uh, that like, like um yeah there, there's a new plugin actually on xdi but it's not showing up um we we should use that other plugin because it takes it three days i believe to launch a competition, um, which makes it shorter. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Uh, all right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And I guess good luck um, for the Omen launch. Uh, like, Sky, let's chat about this as well, about like the competitions. I'd love to help. Um, what else? So I guess the last thing is, um, the discussion on basically how DigsDAO collaborates with, um, collaborate or incubates with different uh, projects or communities. I think we've had over the past couple of weeks uh, quite a few um, opportunities. Um, last week it was uh, Ellipticoin with Mason, and um, there's Almonit, there is uh, Pepo, um, and these are all kind of projects that we could figure out a way to collaborate with. Um, I know that there was a strategy call um with the guys at ellipticoin uh but i don't know any thoughts on this um on how yeah basically on, on how to collaborate what can the xdao offer and um yeah i don't know does anyone have any thoughts well i think we have a lot to offer um <laughs> but I mean, that's kind of like how to how to package that. 
um, because I mean, obviously there's things like actually launching and fundraising, right? You think about our products there, this is what we're talking about with Mason and Swapper. There's, as a user with a lot of these products, I think most of the products that you talk about with the Almanade or Pepo, like we would potentially be a user of them. And then obviously like even some of the funding there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, it, how do we put those pieces together? I think is a is a challenge, and I, I think the maybe initially it depends on each individual project, and we kind of tailor it to that one. Uh, but I think all the projects you mentioned are like interesting ones for Geekstyle, um and like contribute to the ecosystem. So um, yeah, we think about how, how can we move those across and kind of figure out a way to work on those, and maybe that. Uh, illustrates a broader a broader strategy that we can we can do yeah I, I think that um, I, I think that DigsDAO has like a lot to offer in terms of first of all the product suite of enabling a project or a product to IDO and raise funds to it um, if it starts with Mesa or you know whatever the next iteration will be uh, and then providing liquidity on on swapper like it kind of like you, there's a path for uh, to get to get a project to stand on its feet, um, and now there's additional stuff with you know the community, the feedback that we can give, the expertise from people here, and um, the um, basically the marketing as well. Uh, people here are connected to other things, uh, to other like communities, and and can help with the marketing of it. Um, and. Yeah, these are like some of my thoughts, and I think I kind of I I, I try to write something in this in the OKRs, where um, you know a goal of of the XDAO is, uh, sorry, an objective is not only not only to create its own products, but also you know to collaborate with other projects and products. Um, and in the BizDev OKRs, there's uh, an OKR to you know figure out uh, whether it's like ten uh, Mesa IDOs or if we're moving beyond that, then it could be like, you know, more meaningful collaborations with these communities. Um, and I think this is kind of like open for anyone to say what they think. I just think there's, there's a big opportunity here um, to incubate or to work with different projects. Yeah, I, I, I think we need, I think the best way to start is we have to pick one project that we're excited about, maybe that has a token or like, We've had a couple, um, couple examples and presentations, and actually do even if it's small, some kind of actual investment incubation exchange for token kind of thing. And you have to do it once with one that you're excited about to learn how it works, basically, rather than like have a whole plan for how to do it in the future. We have to actually pick one and do it. I think. Yeah, I, I, I like this approach, and I agree. Um, and yeah, it's like Chris said, it's kind of like tailored case by case because, you know, some projects are more progress, some uh, products we are the users, etc. cetera. So, um, yeah. And I think it makes sense for the near term focal point to be partnerships around the existing products and, and governance, right? And there's a few options there, I think. Um, Maybe those are less incubations, but I think they're a good way to kind of get moving uh, on this. And then I think in the future, capital formation and governance itself could be great focal points for these kinds of collaborations as well. Yeah, I agree. Like we see with like one example, underscore protocol, if no one from our side is interested in pushing this thing forward, then it's quite clear where this is heading, right? Then it's not going to go anywhere because we need to su gather support. Yeah, I think um, I think the Almanid guys are preparing like a proposal or like or like a DAO talk post um, um, for DigsDAO. So this is like another kind of thing to explore. But yeah, it definitely needs someone from basically our side. Uh, owning and pushing it or it, basically structuring the deal and what it might look like. 
Um, the, the other example here is API 3. And I thought that was a good one because they had like developed, they kind of come back and developed an MVP and kind of uh, created something that was a little bit more bite sized. And I think that allows us to like ramp up from, from there. So 100%, 100%, like uh, that's actually like a, like an example where we can build on top of and learn, like uh, it doesn't make sense for us to, 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 to go big uh, only if we have like years of um, collaboration with a team and we like, no, um, it totally makes sense to go all in. But until then, um, starting small and learning and co collaborating, uh, the DXDAO is young, API3 is young. We don't know how the future looks like. It makes sense to start small. And they quickly realized that and came back with a um, um, starting point and it totally makes sense to do it like this. Yeah, I guess maybe we should try and figure or even when we are getting like these projects to come up here, like fig trying to figure out what is an MVP that we can do to collaborate, just like an MVP for collaboration, uh, something that we can do together, whether, you know, they are proposing something or we are using their product or I don't know, something. Um, yeah, I think this could be great. Um, so yeah. small, small steps makes a lot of sense, I think. So what, what, like, what would be the conclusion of like elliptic coin and Mason's like, he's been on a couple of times. It sounds interesting, but we don't have like a immediate connection to like what DX Dow is doing. Right. We, it could be potentially big, but he's looking for help from the DAO in some aspects of accomplishing what he's trying to accomplish. Is that, do we just like politely decline? Do we put it on pause or do we try to do something or is it that not a relevant one at this point and we should focus on something that is immediate and smaller that integrates into DXDAO products? Because we we often leave a lot because we're a decentralized organization. There's not one person who's like, guys, I'm going to lead with this. I'm pushing this, and we don't have that a lot of the cases. And and that's because the DAO's not maybe that 100 percent excited about it. Then we leave things hanging, and then something else happens. So we either need to like we have to come to like some consensus, like to right. either to communicate to them, right? I think in general there are our liaisons and we should have. I mean, I think there's been a couple of, of drop balls in the past and we don't know about those, but I think liaisons to these different projects make sense. I think for Ellipticoin specifically, I think that the most obvious area where DXDAO helps Ellipticoin is with capital formation and managing that, right? There's a longer term potential there, like, you know, app chains and stuff. There's this grand vision, but obviously that's, uh, not something we can start cracking on today, right? Um, but yeah, I think the focus with Mason and Ellipticoin is capital formation. And I think both sides need a little bit more time, right? Like we're working on the Mesa relaunch with the idea of focus. You know, that's like a couple months out. And Mason's also trying to figure some things out with Ellipticoin. So I think we should keep that um, connection live and and be ready for for that as a focal point. Um, yeah, just to just to put like a finer point on that, I think there's like yeah. two things we should be like every opportunity like one who is the liaison and two what is the MVP or like minimum you know chunk size thing we're trying to do. And I think with Elliptocoin, we actually I, I do think like we left it at like Mesa sale is probably that potential MVP. Um, and so I think with every opportunity, it's like, that should be the question is like, is there something that we can think about um, that's a small bite-sized thing that that works for, for Dick's DAO? And then we can kind of like bucket that in there and then like the liaison so that not just for Dick's DAO, but for that other like group, if they want to push something, like who are they working with or through to get something across Dick's DAO? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, I, in general, we have the best team who should be interested in um, keeping in sync with Mason, right? Because um, they are like benefits from our side to have this partnership going, especially with our new IDO platform. Like, we should make sure to um, try to um, try to get a deal 
with Mason because he wants to have like a um, a crowd sale on Ethereum, and if we can make it happen, we will benefit out of it. So and also like especially thinking from the swap team side. So there are two teams or even three teams who should be interested in talking to Mason, right? The swap team to, to gather the liquidity, uh, Mesa team to get the IDO done, and the BIS team to actually succeed with their goals to get partnerships done. That, that's sort of your area, right? It's kind of like, are you a little unclear on like how this should be handled? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, we have we have liaisons. We have tracking of all these opportunities. There is not an immediate next step for something like Ellipticoin. Like the next step that you just described is, let's stay in touch with them, and maybe in two months we can do an idea on Mesa. Like, what do we, what is what is the immediate like goal of that currently today, or is that is that, that is that it? That is the next step for there. I mean, that's just like. I think that's okay, just three. That's yeah. not yes, that's, well, we have a lot of those. We have a lot of those. And the I guess the question of this topic of this call is like, are there more immediate things we can act on like today as a DAO rather than like keep these because there's like tons of those around swapper and there's partnerships and there's tons of like potential IDOs, but these products don't exist yet. So there's no a lot of them are there's not immediate immediate action around the opportunity. So we are tracking all of them. Um, we have assigned um, main contacts for all of them. Um, and, but like most of these, there's not like get across the finish line. So that's, if that's okay, that's what, that's the status of, of those right now, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the reality, right? Like some things we're waiting on other things to happen and it makes sense to be prepared. Yeah, I, I would probably say like the action item is just to follow up. Like, I guess every two weeks we can do maybe like a recap and follow up with like all these open opportunities and see like what's the status. Yeah, and, and anyone that wants to be a part of the sheet where we're tracking all this stuff uh, and you're not, let me reach out to me. Awesome. Just as a, I, I would be interested in like even incorporating that more into this call. Like maybe it's just like five minutes. Like here's the sheet, and like oh, there's no updates like yeah, this yeah. week. It's like because it's like a kind of way of reminding everyone, right? Yeah. Because like we don't. Well, I think we need to like think about how to like put things, like like things move on their own a little bit, or sometimes they just need time, but they require like attention, but not like constant. Maybe it's not attention. It's like care or something that we need to. Maybe there's some uh farming analogy here or something but like just uh and i think like going over those or just like looking at them every week or so would be a, i think a helpful exercise oh yeah, yeah. like we can start incorporating that in each one yeah just like starting the call with like after the five minutes of of coffee break five minutes of going over the open opportunities cool sounds good um yeah, wondering like I, I I had this wondering if if you know DXDAO could turn into like I don't want to say like a fully investment firm or something, but you know to you know sort of invest in like very early stage products and you know projects that actually are interested in this decentralization. I think this is what really makes DXDAO unique, in my opinion, that it's it's projects that actually care about decentralization. And if there were like the right type of project that everybody was excited about, I don't think there's anything preventing DXDAO from even making investments today, right? Something that comes to mind when I say that is uh, a project like Tenderly, um, where we see the value, we really like like what they're doing, we think they're like a top-notch team. That kind of thing could be something that gets moved on ASAP, right? I think longer term, as we get Mesa IDOs up and running as we develop like governance 2.0, ERC20 guilds, like we actually have governance infrastructure and capital formation infrastructure to offer, right? Then it becomes more of a scalable thing that, you know, incubation could almost be like, you know, I mean, TXDAO as like a sort of incubator starts to make sense, right? But we're still kind of like at the nascent steps of, of that. But there's like nothing that could even like rival or even like there's there's nothing that exists that could mimic what DXDAO could offer in that because it's like 
the whole suite from like user to investment to like literally the uh, you know the launch launch capabilities to also even like you know the uh, software or things to run. So like I don't know, there's such a huge opportunity for us on this long term to be to offer this to be like something completely new that helps helps uh, things scale. Yeah, I, I have a I have something about like incubation. I work with a, another DAO that did incubation before, and they did it only by incubating, like basically having a, a just good network and and good community that that pushed these projects, and that was enough. Like that's what they called incubation, like investment, community, and contacts. Uh, we probably we will have all of these plus all our services and contacts and knowledge. I would say like uh, like the project that came to us, what's the name again? I forgot. They, they need like to pro productify their, their, their things and like think about like design. And we, we, we know the peoples, we 